Uh, today I have uh, Professor Howard Schmidt, who's the president of the ISF and uh, one time a special advisor for cyberspace security for the White House. Right. Now, the ISF has done a lot of work with cloud computing, right. but so has the security uh, cloud alliance or the cloud security alliance and Jericho uh, and probably several other large bodies. Um, Howard, what's your perspective on all of this? And is it just information overload for our CISOs? Well, I don't think it's information overload because everyone's got a bit of a different perspective. Uh, what the vendors do when they create an alliance or walk, work together from their perspective, there, there's, there's a couple good things that come out of it. One, they're taking their collective information that they have on their own environments, their own products, and how can they help make cloud computing more secure. So it's sort of a vendor slant on that, and so you have to understand that basically it's in their best interest to do so, which is not bad, it's, it's a good thing, but it, it gives them their perspective. When you start looking at things like ISF, which is vendor neutral, which is, which is a, a, a group of you know, almost 300 companies worldwide, global companies, the perspective changes because it's, okay, I want to do this. I think it's a good thing. In many cases, I'm convinced that it's the tremendous cost savings in, involved in there, but I want to do it right. I don't want to wind up moving into a cloud computing environment that's going to, you know, I have to then deal with threats and vulnerabilities on down the road. So that perspective is a little bit different. So when you start looking at the perspective and you start looking at where everyone is starting from, it's a little bit different. We've seen some of the major uh, cloud computing uh, companies like the Amazons, Google, Microsoft, uh, those folks coming together and actually working together to create a good framework so we know how to make the good decisions. So when you look at all that together, it can't be anything but a good thing to move us to that next generation of computing. Sure. Um, Jericho Forum would say that the doing something very similar to the ISF because they're pretty vendor neutral and they've just produced their uh, really uh, great insights with the, uh, the cube model. I, I don't know if you've read the paper. I did, yes. yes. And how, what, what's your perspective? Well, I think once again, that's more information out there, and, and, but I don't think it's overload. It's, it's taking, you know, there's only so many different perspectives that one could look at when you start looking at cloud computing. You look at the resilience, you look at the availability, you look at the authentication, you look at the, uh, the vulnerabilities involved, you look at the, the, the perspective from the client side versus the server side, you look at the way data transit. These are all certain, certain things that they've got to be part of everyone's plan when we start looking at security. So when you put this group together, it doesn't have to be unique, but it serves the audience that they're looking to serve. In our case, obviously, our, our primary constituency is our 300 plus uh, ISF members, and so we want to make sure it's, it's written for them and meets their needs. Sure. Um, and what do you think? Because uh, at the moment, you know, um, many people are feeling cloud isn't quite there yet, right. apart from very minor you know, applications which I'm not using 24 by 7, I'm not, they're not business critical. Right. What, what, what's your, I, I think there was a statement from VMware that uh, uh, last week that says we're going to make cloud computing secure. Right. Which implies that it's not here as well. Right. Well, what, what, do you, what do you think? And, and you're absolutely correct. And when you start looking at the spectrum of things, one first and foremost is end users. We've been doing cloud computing for a long time, from the early days of Yahoo Mail and Google Mail and MS, or Hotmail was at the time now, MSN Live. We've been doing that for, for quite a while. But the, the key point that you just pointed out is moving into the business environment. Whether it's, this, whether it's a small SME space or whether it's a large enterprise environment, those are where the heavy questions are coming from now. Those are the environment where people say, yeah, it's not as secure as it should be. It may be secure for a, a lot of work, but not for everything. And so as we start making that path moving forward, we say, okay, it's, it's good enough for this. Now, how do we get it to be available for more critical business applications? How do we then wind up ensuring that the data that's being stored out there, that if indeed something bad should happen, it becomes non-valuable to people. Such exa example, storing things in a fully encrypted manner. Uh, and then the other piece of that, the cloud, that we've always needed to take into consideration, and that's sort of the end-to-end -end trust involved in the entire thing. Because you may have a really secure cloud environment, but if you've got insecurity endpoint, uh, insecure endpoints, that becomes a problem as well. So by making a comment that VMware has said about we're going to make it secure, that's absolutely correct. And I know every company that I've talked to, that's their end goal. They're going to take where we are now, which is okay, 
for a lot of things and make it stronger and better for everything we want to do. So we've got so much momentum, so much hype now. When, when, when is it going to be ready? When should the CISOs actually think, okay, now's the time to really look at uh, the cloud for our business critical apps? Well, it's interesting because I was this meeting I was at last week, one of the, the, the CISOs of one of the large pharmaceuticals worldwide had already moved over there. Yeah. Uh, and it was interesting to listen to this story because uh, what had happened is one of the business units said, we need to set up this new function. We need 25 servers. We need to host these applications. We need this, this, this much bandwidth. They went to the IT organization. The IT organization said, yeah, part of our project plan, we can have that delivered to you in seven months or six months. Whereas someone on the other side took a credit card, rang up, uh, I think it was Amazon at that time, and said, listen, I need 25 servers, I need this bandwidth, I need this much storage, I need to host these applications, and it was done in a relatively short period of time. So we're seeing it taking place now. And, but, the, but the job is, is now we're sitting there, in some case, in large enterprises, now we need to make sure that we continue to move up the level, that the security we have now that we're happy with, we want to be ecstatic with, and we want to be delighted with as we move forward. So, finger in the air? Uh, I don't know that the finger, well, from the finger in air perspective, I think we're getting there. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the few times that I've seen in my career, after all these years, where the discussion at the very begin of the discussions uh, about cloud computing is not so much about the economies of scale, the, the this monies you save, the availability you've got, but every discussion now has the, the discussion about security. That's taking us a long, long way to actually getting the realization of having this great environment with having it more secure. Okay, um, thank you very much. Hello everyone, my name is Ben Chai. I'm the editor for securityvibes.com. If you've enjoyed this video or have any other comments to make, please do fill in the comment boxes and let us know what you think. Thank you.